Many private chapels have an open door policy and often become a spiritual resource for outsiders. When Emma Van Spike set up her own chapel as part of a country retreat in Lincolnshire, she hoped it would provide support for the hundreds of visitors that she welcomed every year. What she couldn't have realized though was just how much it would help her cope with her own personal tragedy. Emma and her family moved into Wykes Manor near Spalding seven years ago. The first visit we came here, there was a huge great candelabra that had been left standing outside what was the trap house. So we just thought, oh, that's where the chapel's to be then. And it was as basic as that. From whitewashing walls to painting religious icons, the family spent four years working painstakingly to create their perfect chapel. But just as they were nearing its completion, they were suddenly rocked by tragedy. It was a dark November evening, and Emma's 18-year-old son, John, was late coming home from college on his motorbike. Six o'clock, there was a knock on our back door, and through the door walked a policeman. So I just looked at him and I said, you don't have to say anything. Is he dead or is he wounded? And he said, he's dead, I'm afraid. And I said, was it instant? And he said, yes, and I said, thank God. After John was killed, he lay in the chapel for nearly three days. So all our friends and family said their goodbye that way. The chapel was very important in keeping John's memory alive. I think the chapel is useful for people to come and just sit there and like pray. We've had people who have just come and just seen it and been like, oh, wow, it's so cool. I feel so lucky, so it's nice to have a chapel there. Today, John's memory lives on through his paintings inside the chapel. I now have a permanent record of my son's talents. He was 16 and a half, 17 when he painted these. So he, mm, he probably would have gone on to great things. Let's offer them up to Our Lady as we say, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. And three years on, the chapel which John helped create serves as the spiritual heart of their retreat. I don't really know. It's a place for everybody. It's not exclusive. Our personal Christian faith is the battery behind it, but it's open for everybody. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, I hope you've enjoyed our journey around some of the wonderful private chapels across the country, many of which you can now visit yourself. We've been treated to some superb music, and we're going to leave you with our final hymn today.
Next week we celebrate harvest and Claire visits Kenya to see how the humble Irish potato is transforming lives. There's music from Stuart Tannend and from the Southern Gospel Quartet, The Tailors. And our choirs will be singing some great harvest hymns. Well, coming up tonight, a couple of fine English country gardens to view on Country File. That's at seven. Up next, Steve Batchel braves the Antarctic. It's deadly on a mission.